Got this email from Al. He says, I thought this might be of interest to you. It was a, an article from moneynews.com. It says, breaking from moneynews.com. Faber, central banks will never tighten rates again, is the headline. Economist Mark Faber said central banks will never tighten rates again. All they will do is print more money. For that reason, Faber thinks that cash and long-term bonds are a bad place to hold money. Now, of course, central banks try to control the economy by increasing interest rates when they want to slow things down so people won't borrow as much or banks won't borrow as much, more technically. And they decrease interest rates when they want more money supply to be out there. They want people to borrow money because they can kind of stimulate the economy if people are spending more and they can increase the money supply out there. Now, of course, that would make sense that cash and long-term bonds would be affected by that because, of course, if there's more money supply out there, each additional dollar that gets put out there becomes worth less and less and the existing money supply goes down in value. As a result, he says equities are an avenue to preserve wealth, but he says they're somewhat risky given the effects of rampant currency depreciation. Now, there's a yes and no to that. Of course, equities do have volatility. That's what gives them the excess return over time. I tell people embrace the risk because that, that's what gives us greater return in equities over time. But as far as being risky longer run, I would disagree that that would be the case. Why? Because what happens is, you know, when those prices go up in the marketplace, you know, companies, you know, as there's more money supply, will raise prices to make sure that they stay profitable. If there's more money floating out there, they've got to charge higher prices. Now, short run, you're going to have an effect that may be negative on the stock market because, quite frankly, nobody wants to be the first to raise prices. If you run a car dealership, you don't want to be the first to raise the prices on your car versus your competitor. It could be a competitive disadvantage. But over time, you will indeed raise prices. Think about it. You know, cars in the 70s, two, three thousand dollars now. $20,000, $30,000. So car companies did eventually raise prices. They had to to stay in business, and they will do that to protect themselves. Now, he gets into talking about gold, and, and I think I've kind of hit that enough in some of these videos, so I'm going to skip that part. But he does talk a little bit about emerging market economies and where to invest based on this information. Now, one of the points he makes, he says that people still think of emerging market economies as poor cousins. But because 80% of the world's people are here, in aggregate, the consumption is huge. And technically, he is absolutely correct. There is a lot of consumption or a lot of potential consumption in emerging market economies because there are so many people there. But he concludes that everybody should have 50% of their money in, in the emerging world outside the West. And I would heartily disagree with that. Number one, what you're dealing with with emerging market economies are economies where property rights protections may not necessarily be that strong. So we don't want to put too much money in those areas because when it gets down to it, investing, folks, is all about somebody protecting your property rights, your right to own property wherever it is, number one. Number two, the other thing is, is his observation is on something that everybody else sees. If you think about it, a lot of emerging markets companies in these, in these countries are actually up over 400% over the past 10 years. So a lot of these observations have already been built into stock prices. If you look at the prices compared to book value, they're very high in historical terms. Not necessarily overpriced, but they're high in historical terms. So it's not like he is observing something that nobody else notices. Now, another thing to think about is this. Yes, there's a lot of demand or maybe a lot of pent up demand in these emerging market countries. People want to get up to our standard of living that we've had in the West for a long time. But it may just be that some of the best suppliers to satisfy that demand will be companies in established countries like the West. So therefore, what we want to do is just remain diversified Notice this stuff, look at it and say, hey, you know what? It may be a cause for optimism because there's going to be growth down the road as these different emerging economies start to catch up with us. But I wouldn't necessarily take the investment advice contained herein. And if you got a question, you got something that you've seen that you want me to cover in one of these videos, email me. It's paul at paulwinkler.net. 
and uh, make comments on this video. We'll catch you next time.